All right, welcome to the Ultimate Musket Guide for Season 3. Um, today, we are covering everything. Arenas, Apis Rush 4, the builds that go with those modes. Um, not covering PvE, that's not my thing. I don't really ever PvE. Um, I mean, Musket is viable in open world PvP. I wouldn't recommend Musket in Dungeon, unfortunately. It's still not good enough for that. Now, jumping back into the PvP side of things, so again, we're covering the builds for every mode, the play styles I would recommend for every mode, some tips and tech you might not know about. So this is going to be everything you need to know for Season 1 and Season 2 because the Musket Trapper Tree re rework is coming in Season 3, uh, if the rumors are true. Let's dive straight into it. First off, I'm going to go over my gear. My gear is very shit, okay? In fact, I have a wrong rune glass on my armor right now, but that's okay. So I am not this. I will be showing this right after this. I've got all the chapters listed if you want to skip to certain parts of the video. Now this is my Outpost Rush and War build. You could try running double ranged in Outpost Rush and War, but again, not having rapier means you're really limiting your playstyle to that long distance sniping, spamming abilities, just kind of padding really. And uh, especially with the boner of some of the 50% the damage drop at 100 meters, you're really going to notice that if you're trying double range as a musket player. That's going to be a big difference for you. So I recommend getting aggressive, getting offensive, getting in there with the rapier. So now, the next thing we're going to talk about is what is my gear. So I'm running two name pieces. I'm running the protective cow. You can look at the perks here. It's pretty shit. Um, the chest traps. Uh, the the rune glass you're running is sighted thrust sword. Now you could run your elemental emerald depending on what gym you're running in your musket. But keep in mind, if you ever decide to change your gym, you're gonna have to change all your rune glasses again. And both this rune glass and the elemental rune glass basically do the same thing. It's all around just a little bit of a damage buff. So I recommend just going with sided thrust sword. It's the easiest way for future proofing yourself and saving gold. Again, that's that. Um, Royal Lagoon Chest Ramps, Vigor, Fizzer Version, Resilient, Light Gloves, Shirking, Rezil, and Parrying Shooter Silence Legs. This is my one Biss piece right here. I think it's Biss anyways. Um, you could probably go Elemental over, over version over Fizzer Version, but it doesn't matter too much. It is a, I guess it's a little bit of a difference. But we're going Physical Version, Resilient, and Crippling Powder Burn. Um, I'm really proud of that piece. I snagged it for 10k on the market a, a month ago. It's really, really cheap. Um, Flame Proc Divine Health, again, I don't have stamina recovery, I am Povo build, I can't really afford to drop a protection perk and health, and I don't have enough coal to get a 3 perk, so it kind of is what it is, uh, but I've been using this kind of gear for over a year, and I've been com playing competitively completely fine in the top companies uh, in my region, um, and performing really well. Um, again, I would recommend stamina recovery, recovery if you're going for best in slot, I just can't afford it. Um, and then you have uh, Divine, which replaces that stone recovery. I like Divine. Divine is my second best option that I got this amulet for. Flame protection over thrust, because in this meta, obviously, we're taking a lot of fire damage, especially if we're playing up close. We're going to want a little bit that, a little bit of that to stack with that elemental aversion. It just makes sense. OPR ring. I still use Mortal Empowerment because it's fairly easy to get kills still. Musket does a lot more damage with the Fortify nerfs. I also recommend mucking around, having fun with Mortal Empowerment. It's better than Invigorated Punishment when you're getting kills. If you're not getting kills, switch to Champion's Ring or any Invigorated Punishment Thrust Damage Ring will work. Um, I just use Champion's Ring again because I'm poor. Uh, this is what I'd recommend in War and Arena. Um, and now the Earring is Refreshing Toast, Nimble, Purifying Toast. I personally think this is best in slot. Nimble is great. You stack that with Stalwart, that's 20%. Is a great boost to stamina regeneration right there. Potion cooldown, obviously great, and purifying toast. As a musket player, we love that. We love getting rid of those dots uh, that actually deal a lot of damage to us because we are very low comp. Um, we're running the Stalwart Heart Rune of Stone form. It's going to basically make you invincible uh, for a short period of time, so any stone form will still be very nice to use. For the musket, not best in slot. This is my best musket that I can afford. Accuracy Enchanted, keenly empowered. So two damage mods and accuracy. Again, best would be accuracy enchanted and arboreal attunements. Um, I'm using final respite named Rapier from Lazarus. Sundering repost is the main perk I use it for. I've probably been using this for over a year. Um, I think it's really good. Um, it's definitely not best in slot at all. Far from. Um, again, make sure you go to the chapter um, that does go over the best in slot rapier. Um, anyways. That is everything for the gear side of things on my kits. 
Uh, here is the musketry I run. This is a bit optimized. There are some things I would like to swap around, but this is the best it's going to get for max DPS uh, consistency CDR um, for both outpost rush and war. I would recommend this. So again, we're picking up all the damage runs. We're of course getting the new steady hands. Uh, we have sniper tree on, of course. Sniper tree is fixed. Sorry, zoom is fixed. Um, you just need to get used to it. It does feel a little bit weird, but once you're used to it, you'll be back in the swing of things being able to zoom again. Um, and it feels really nice to have that back um, after me complaining about it for so long. Um, anyways, the right tree, we have our damage mods again. We pick up Hustle, of course, because we need a little bit of haste if we're going to evade our opponents. Um, we have Tactical Reload still, still very nice. Um, kick them when they're down, obviously, and just the first tier of Stick Bomb. That is my Musket Tree. This is my Rapier Tree. Since I am a Repost user, I don't recommend using Repost. It's a very hard and very situational ability. I would drop Repost for Flourish and Finish if I were you. I like to make things difficult, I'm also just in love with the classic Grace Tree, I've been using it for over a year, um, and I'm going to stand by that. Um, again, it's harder to use, but it's what I enjoy, and I'm going to play what I enjoy. So we're running the Stamina on hit, I think this is very good because I believe it procs on any hit, and it also procs on Rune Glass Ticks, so effectively every time I hit someone with a Light Attack on Rapier, that is 9 stam over 2 seconds, I think. 9 stam over 2 seconds on any hit. So it's a great way to be more nimble when you're up close uh, and playing with the rapier again. Um, now we have the uh, two left tree abilities, or two abilities on the left tree are refreshing strikes. Again, we both have both the CDR abilities. I think that's very important. So you have max cooldown reduction on rapier. You're really going to notice this up close, especially if you're doing a lot of light attacks. I would recommend this. Again, I'm going to show you the rapier tree I'd recommend in the best in slot uh, build section of the video that goes over my new world guide setup and what I would call the best in slot musket setup, uh, and which I'd recommend for everyone to use. Anyways, that is my build. Uh, enjoy looking at what you should be aiming for and what I'm also working towards myself. Enjoy. Alright, so this is the best musket build. I've set it all up on New World Guide. The links are in the description. An amazing website. This is the best musket build in my opinion. Again, opinions will differ, but I think this is probably the best you can get in the current meta. The Firestaff meta. We're fully specced into higher elemental armor rating. Again, we're going to be taking a lot of fire damage this season. So, we are running that pieces of armor that have the highest elemental armor rating. We have Sighted Emeralds. Again, this future proofs yourself if you want to swap gems out in your muskets. You don't have a gold sink. Resilient elemental aversion. Standard, standard. Omnidirectional evade. Resilient elemental aversion. Deadly Flourish Resilient Elemental Aversion. I think this is an underrated perk that comes in very handy when you least expect it and even if you just randomly proc, you're like, oh damn, I just did an extra 25% damage. Hell yeah, that is worth it. Again, I would recommend dropping a repost for Flourish and Finish in all scenarios. Don't do what I do. Leaks, Empowering Shear Stance Resilient Elemental Aversion. Now, I would not put that single refreshing on our last piece of armor. I feel like that is a waste. We can be getting more out of that. So I've put in a new perk that has been going around. Our third perk is flame conditioning instead of refreshing. And I think that is much more use than one piece of CDR. One piece of CDR is not gonna do much. But extra 4% fire damage absorption will do something. So resilient elemental version flame conditioning on our boots here. Again, we're fully specced into the highest elemental armor rating. I think that is very important. Um, we are like running the classic best ranged uh, amulet here. Thrust protection, health, stem recovery. Again, you could play around with this and swap thrust protection out for flame protection if you want a little bit more fire protection. Again, it gets expensive with these best amulets. Amulets are like one of the more expensive parts of your gear, uh, especially as a dex player. Um, so again, thrust protection, flame protection, I'll just go with whatever you can afford and obtain on your server, to be honest with you. Ring burning, thrust damage, and invigorated punishment. I think, again, 
Making that backdraft last longer is definitely a nice touch. Getting that extra 8% damage for another 29% duration. I can't remember how long Powder Burn lasts, but it lasts a while and lasts longer than the headshot too. So again, making that last longer, getting that backdraft for longer. Other product, thrust damage. It's very nice, getting more thrust damage in there, getting more damage in general. And uh, uh, the last product there is uh, Invigorated Punishment, which is again better than Mortal Empowerment now after the nerves. Earring, we are running Nimble, Refreshing Toast, and Purifying Toast. Purifying Toast is great, it's a dex player, cleansing the bleeds, the burns, the slows. It's it's great. I, I think it, it is a must have as a musket player. Refreshing Toast, uh, obviously, is required for any build in the game really if you're not using it you're kind of putting yourself at a massive disadvantage uh, nimble um again with star warp that's 20 percent stem regeneration very very nice the thing i've had a lot of questions about should you run accuracy the answer is for consistency you will notice it people are saying you don't notice it, you don't notice it if you're shooting longer than 50 meters you're going to notice accuracy if you don't notice it you obviously don't play you're not playing with it enough you will notice it i've been playing muskets so much since patch and i can tell the difference between having accuracy and not having accuracy is night and day when sniping now when it comes to close range below i would say 40 meters so this is talking about arena here dropping accuracy for um a third damage mod jagged keenly empowered would be a go-to and if you have that musket already i would recommend using it in those close range scenarios you can use a triple damage mod musket in outpost rush since it is a casual mode you don't need that competitive consistency and if you're deciding to be a bit more ballsy with your players get a little bit more close range then it's going to pay off a lot more having that third damage mod but again if you are getting slaughtered into war with a musket um accuracy 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 if you're sniping an outpost rush accuracy you're gonna notice it it makes a big difference um sniping um close range again you can run that third damage from musket and what you can do is if you're out of action you can do a cheeky little gear set swap just have two same gear, gear sets the only difference in those gear sets is the musket that can work and you can constantly just switch that is that is a route you could take and you could be a hot swap player that will work and it'll work really well um so if there's too many fire mages put on an accuracy musket if there's more melee you feel a little bit frisky you know put on that put on the triple damage one musket um now for the rapier um this is what i think is the best in slot dps musket rapier i think it just cranks out damage trench and strikes uh has a few options actually so you can either do trench and strikes trench and crits or rogue all three of those work phenomenally with this build they all provide an insane damage boost as at third damage mod uh, this is a very hard rapier to roll again but you do have three chances at three different kinds so and then again these are consumers that you would probably be running in a war environment as uh clean spots and stuff um again 300 165 50 you could play around with this and and go 250 dex 160 100 con i still think you need to have that low con and high dex and to pump damage though um and especially with the fort nerfs you're going to be pumping a lot more damage on some players that do run fort still or don't run uh earlier version maybe they haven't got the gear yet because it's quite expensive anyways now on to the abilities for the best in slot builds if we uh where do we find it down the bottom here okay cool so for the rapier again we are dropping repost for flourish and finish this is the build i would recommend we are dropping perfectionist because again i don't think you're always going to be at 100 percent health um swiftness is a pretty tiny haste buff that's not always going to be propped full fledge full evade of course momentum of course is great um we have refreshing strikes and red curtains so both cdr so if you're in a hitting a few people that's like seven to eight percent cdr every hit which is or every crit hit um and this is just every hit so i think having that really really solid amount of cdr you're averaging six to eight percent cdr when hitting a couple players is really nice um uh, flourish and finish again amazing ability they're below 50 percent health you're going to proc that deadly flourish 
uh, which is heavily underrated perk. Um, Lights Edge, or Light Edge, sorry. Metal Swipes deal more damage, of course. More damage is great. DPS Rapier, that's what we're going for here. Deal 10% more damage, and then Angarde, deal 10% more damage um, when your target has greater than 50% health. Again, this is, of course, another great one that's pretty consistent because a lot of players, when you start off the engagement, will be higher than 100%, or higher than 50%, sorry. This is my best in slot musket guide for Apis Rush and War, and this is what I would recommend. Opinions may differ between players, metas may differ between servers. So, again, if something doesn't feel right, like maybe you need to switch up your gems, maybe slot some more fire gems in your jewelry because your server has a lot more mages or you're taking a lot more fire damage in the way you play remember personal tweaks to your set are important you don't want to copy my build one for one you need to make sure that you have some leeway to adjust to your server's meta or your play style specifically now into the best in slot arena chapter of the video um, and what i would recommend now when it comes to armor we are running full elemental armor rating again we're in that fire stuff mage meta um so this is good for ice core not void gauntlet and of course the fire staff um i guess a little bit it stops life lifestyle attacks dealing more damage as well but life stuff actually does good dps against a musket so i can't i can't say much um so for the the heat we're running resilient freedom elemental version again we're stacking all that elemental version we're running uh sighted emeralds in our armor by the way um, as you can see down the bottom in our jewelry, we are actually running rubies Because we again need to have a decent amount of flame protection We're, we're stacking it up. There's a lot of flame protect, uh, flame protection in this build We're running uh, again resilient freedom elemental version on chest In our hands a resilient freedom elemental version the set is five freedom. I think so we're, we're making sure those CCs are not lasting long. Uh, our legs are Crippling Power Band, Resilient and Freedom. So we actually dropped an elemental version to have a five piece freedom. And I think five piece freedom will make a difference. So I just had to cut the video. They had a little bit of a allergy. Um, anyways, for our feet, uh, Omnidirectional Evade and Resilient Freedom. Uh, Omnidirectional Evade is obviously a very good DPS pro for Rapier. I would highly recommend it. Um, now, our amulet is flame protection health and stamina recovery um and i think flame protection on amulet and arenas is going to benefit you more i think you're going to be versing more mages than you are bows and again this is something you can hot swap you can have two amulets ready to go a flame protection amulet a thrust protection amulet depending on what range you're versing why you don't want to have slash protection or, or any of that kind of uh, melee resistance is because as a range player you honestly should not be getting hit by melee too much and in the rare chances you are you've got your mobility and cc abilities yourself to get out of that you've got five piece freedom you've got um flourish and finish as a great way to escape and generally you just should be playing a little bit more distant you shouldn't be completely in their face you should be iframing their melee attacks pretty well i would say um so again we're not really running any uh, melee resistance at all because we don't need to for the way musket is played. Um, we're basically just running resistances for the two types of range. Again, the rubies and jewelry you can hot swap all the time as well. You could hot swap rune glasses, but again, that is a gold sink and a waste just for arenas. That will not make a difference in how you win the arena. That will come down to skill, in my opinion. Now. Flame protection, health, stem recovery for amulets. Ring is trust, trust damage, hardy, invigorated punishments. Again, we're swapping that burning out from the war build or our post rush build to hardy because having more stamina arenas is such a small but noticeable difference since it's such a contained environment. Um, you also notice that we don't have um, empowering shooter stance, perk on armor or weapon. Uh, this is because you shouldn't be using shooter stance in arena. You're too static, you're too open to getting free hit by a mage, which has gigantic light attacks. Uh, bow got a little bit of a nerf, but still, 
shoot a stance here and open target to any other range class and I would not recommend it. Refreshing Toast, Nimble, Purifying Toast, taking that Nimble with Stalwart 20% right there. That is going to make a huge difference in conjunction with Hardy. Now, for the Muskets, instead of Accuracy and Arena, we're running our Keenly Jagged Musket. We're also running a Amber Rune Glass or Arboreal Emerald, oh sorry, Arboreal Amber, my bad. Uh, because this is a dot build. I recommend dot builds in arena all the way. It's gonna be amazing. You shoot someone with powder burn, you they get the jagged, they get the powder burn, and they get that rune glass dot. That is a lot of dot right there. That is a lot of dot damage. Um, and it's an absolutely insane build. And again, we don't need that accuracy since we're playing in such a small arena. That is like max something like 50 meters to the other side, or it might even be less. I can't remember. But the, the size of the arena is really small, and that allows us to use our Kinley Jagger Musket. So again, we still have a use for our Kinley Jagger Musket, they haven't gone to complete waste. Um, and again, you can still use them if you're playing close range in Outpost Rush. Um, for a Rapier, same as Outpost Rush and Ward, Sundering Group Post, Trenchant Strikes, Abora, the two minute again, there's a bit of leeway with Trenchant Strikes that could be Rogue or Trenchant Crits. Consumables, um, I recommend Oak Flesh and Gemstone in your 3 and 4. Um, again, depending on what you're versing, um, and this will help um, if you are versing melee. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, and then on to the actual, uh, again, we're running a 300 165 50 for some reason, it's just stat point on the side. Again, we're, so we're running the, the, the standard stat split. You want as much damage as you can get, still, that is very important. Now, for the builds, for Musket, we're running the Triple Special Shot build. I've been using this in OPR even, and it is a lot of fun. Um, I've built this one for mobility, so it's a little bit different. Running full um, Backdraft or full Powder Burn Tree. We've dropped Hit Your Mark, because I don't think this is necessary. You're not going to be getting much benefits out of this, because you're at max at 50 meters. So you might be seeing like a... And maybe a 4%, 5%, I don't, I don't know, I'm not going to math, I'm not going to do that math here. But you're getting a very tiny damage gain for what a different for a different perk that we could be running on the right tree. Which I'll show you in a second. Again, we're running Sniper. Again, I don't actually tend to zoom too much in arenas. But that headshot damage is a big difference for sure. Um, we're running Heightened Precision. This one is a little bit more consistent than Hit Your Mark. Um, because it, especially with the new um, steady hands, which we are running again, um, you will notice it a little bit because you are going to be aiming down sight sometimes to get that accuracy. Maybe if you want to land a hit shot with powder burn, because it's good to guarantee that shot. Cooled shot, um, of course, damage. Repairing hit shot again. We're not running shooter stance. You are a free target if you're running that in arena. Salt on the wounds, of course. One tier stopping power, and after we just want that stagger, a little bit of an escape, a little bit of a knockback to help your teammates. Maybe you need a peel for someone um, and help them out, get them out of a CC chain. Um, and that's what I love stopping power for. Amazing ability, and since grit is locked to con now, light melee that don't have certain abilities that have grit are going to be affected by this now, which is really nice. <laughs> Um, we're running uh, both uh, mobility abilities, hustle and back it up. I think these are very important in arena. Uh, empowering weakness, again, is important as well. A tactical reload is also important. I would have liked to get Kickin' when they're down, but I don't know what to drop to get it. Um, which is a little annoying. I'm thinking maybe you could drop heightened precision and put on Kickin' when they're down. Um, but, yeah. That's something you could do, drop Hunt and Precision and put Kick'em when they're down on, and that might be a little bit more consistent than Hunt and Precision. But that is what I would recommend for Arena Musket. Now for the Rapier, um, we're running the Flourish and Finish. This is basically the exact same tree. I think it is the exact same tree as uh, Outpost Rush and War. Um, so, FA, um, Fletch, and Flourish and Finish. Um, again, you could also swap out one of these elemental versions on your other pieces of gear for deadly flourish um, and that will actually come in quite handy in arena and I've, in fact i might even recommend that is dropping another one of these elemental versions for deadly flourish just had a bit of a, a burp there um, <clears throat> i think that is pretty much everything and I'll, I'll see you guys in the next video